Bill Gates is one of four super investors that owns shares of Anheuser-Busch in Beth. And despite a number of challenges, this company remains the world's largest beer brewer. They hold over a quarter of the global market share in the beer industry. And the company's product portfolio includes more than 500 different brands, some of which are global icons like Budweiser, Corona or Stella Artois. It's fascinating to see how a company which roots can be traced to 1366 continues to be a global powerhouse in the beverage industry. But let's try to see, is Bill Gates right in thinking that we can make money by investing in this company 658 years after they produced their first beer? If you were to invest $1,000 into this company 10 years ago, you could buy around 9 shares. And now they would be worth something close to $560. Luckily, this company pays dividends, so in that time you would get $186 as dividends. So if we add together those numbers, we get $746. So that is a loss of 25.4% in 10 years. Well, we should remember that future results don't have to look anything like the past. So. Uh, Let's take a look at the company itself. Individual Insiders, that is an X. Only 0.2% of the company is owned by individual insiders. So the management does not have its skin in the game. And are individual insiders buying? That is an X. In the last year, we didn't see any transactions from insiders. And do super investors own this company? That is a check. Four super investors own shares of this company, including Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They bought 1.7 million shares around a year ago when the share price dropped after a lot of controversy with a change in the marketing strategy of Bud Light. So he bought the dip and it looks like a nice investment so far. He is up by probably around 15%. And are super investors buying right now? That is a check. Hillman Value Fund added over 17,000 shares. So that is an additional 20.4% of their investment. So not only Bill Gates believes that it can be a good investment. <laughs> Return on invested capital, that is an X at 3.2% 10-year median returns. And we want to see this number higher than 10%, so that is a poor result. And what do we know about net profit margin? It is a check at 8%, and the industry median is 6.8%. So they have a little bit of pricing power, but nothing crazy. And now let's take a look at share buyback. It is an X. In the last 10 years, they issued 23.4% extra shares. That is not good. Long-term investors are getting diluted. But maybe they issued new shares instead of taking on a lot of debt. It's an X. It would take them over 8 years to pay the long-term debt with a current free cash flow. And we want to see it under 2 years. So unfortunately, that is a meaningful red flag. Revenue growth. That is an X at 3.2% 10-year compound annual growth rate. And we would like to see this number higher than 10%. So uh, not very impressive, even for a big company. And free cash flow growth. That is an X at minus 1.5% in the last 10 years. That does not look good. And earnings per share growth. That is another X at minus 11.4% in the last 10 years. That is why issuing extra shares and diluting investors is something I really 
don't like. Persia results are always worse in such a scenario, and that is an important factor influencing the stock price. The dividend yield is 1.4%, so shareholders can expect to get 87 cents annually per every share. And the payout ratio, that is a check at 34.2%. And we want to see the payout ratio somewhere between 20 and 50%, so that looks very nice. And what about dividend growth? It is an X at minus 15.5% five-year growth rate. So, as we can see, it is not a stable dividend that slowly grows every year. Instead, it is determined by the results of the company. If they are doing well, we get a lot of money through dividends. If they are in trouble, we feel it too. Price to earnings ratio is 26.7, so that is rather high, especially for a company that does not have an impressive growth rate. So Anheuser-Busch is probably rather expensive right now. But to properly value it, we will create three scenarios of its future growth. So in the low scenario, we will estimate a growth of 4% for the entire 10 years. In the medium, 6% and then 5% growth. And in the high scenario, 8% growth for the first 5 years and then 6%. The beer market worldwide is predicted to grow 6.1% annually. So the low scenario is showing a story in which they are growing substantially slower than the market. Medium scenario anticipates that they will grow with the market, and the high one is predicting that they will outperform most of their competitors. So with such estimates, the intrinsic value in the low scenario is $32, in the medium $40, and in the high scenario $49. But we have to always apply a margin of safety to those prices. I use a 30% one, and with such a margin we get in the low scenario $23, in the medium $28, and in the high one $34. And the current price is around $62. So this company is expensive right now. So let's take a look at our Stock Ranking Pro. Here we see all the data we just talked about, and here we have our company overview. So we can clearly see that when it comes to investors and dividends, it is all good. But financial health and also growth are very poor. If we go back to the ranking and sort it by the overall score of the company, we see that Anheuser-Busch is very close to the bottom of the ranking. Well, let's try to understand what can be the future of this company. So what is the bear case for Anheuser-Busch? Well, size of the company, 500 brands, quarter of the market share worldwide, all of that leaves very little place for growth. As long as the world beer market is growing, they should grow with it. But outperforming others can be tricky. And here we get to another point. In mature and saturated markets, we see that customer preferences are shifting towards craft beers and other healthier beverages. So that can create another headwind for the company. And finally, the shares of this company are expensive. And they have surprisingly weak financial health, a lot of debt and poor growth. So not very encouraging. And what is the bull case? Well, if they will play their cards right, then they can use their size and the dominant market position to strengthen their premium brands and use the economy of scale 
to their advantage. And they can win with smaller competitors not only by creating a better brand or making the production cost go down thanks to economy of scale, but also by continuing their strategy of acquiring their peers. And the last thing is that we see a tendency in Anheuser-Busch to go beyond just beers. They are expanding to ready-to-drink beverages, seltzers, ciders, and other products that can open them to totally new consumer base and new markets. And that can generate real growth. If you enjoyed this video, check out my analysis of Heineken or Ambev, which actually is a subsidiary of Anheuser-Busch. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.